Okay, but so the second game between Luos and Waffle Master is going to be on Acid Plant. Um, so here we go. Uh, Luos down in the bottom right of the map and up in the top left, Waffle Master. So, um, yeah. Last game, both players opening up um, with pretty straight up play. Um, nothing. Uh, drastically cheesy, uh, but when it came to expanding, Waffle Master went for a sneaky ninja expand in the side of the map that essentially was not discovered all game long. And um, I, I think that uh, definitely tipped the balance for him. So when it came to um, the sort of closing stages of the game, that hidden expand in the corner, I think, uh, was probably what won him the game. So um, I su suspect that Luos will be on his toes in this game about, uh, in terms of checking the map and spreading out his overlords and things like that so that he can't be caught unawares again. Um, but we shall see. So Waffle Master again going for this double parrox opening, which is uh, a pretty normal thing for a Terran. Um, I, I'm not clear on why he hasn't built them uh, to make a wall, because, you know, it's, it's very easy for Zerg to get... Um, Zerglings out super early uh, and come and give you a pretty hard time uh, and having a wall just instantly shuts that down so um, you know it doesn't cost you any extra it, it isn't any additional hassle to just build your barracks here and then you know especially with the orientation of the ramp like this you can build the barracks here you can drop down the tech lab and you, you've got an insta wall um, but Waffle Master choosing not to do that uh, you know again Look, no workers in production, no workers being built, none, none, D don't stop, don't stop with the workers, never stop with the workers. Um, so Luos, uh, in a similar sort of opening to the last game, has got the spawning pool up, is mining gas, uh, has got a queen up, um, and a handful of links. So this looks very, very normal as a Zerg opening. This is this is how you open a Zerg, uh, generally. The only thing that's missing here is the um, expand. So I'd like to see that come down pretty quickly. Um, because, well, you need it. You need it for the larva, if nothing else. Otherwise, you'll end up with just tons of money that you can't spend because you just don't have enough larva. So you need that extra hatchery. Um, uh, as, as quickly as you can get it really but uh, I am very much liking this idea of just getting a little handful of lings out nice and early to get across the map have a look at what your opponent's doing gives you map control these guys can be running about the map it shuts down any scouting that your opponent might do it, it, it does scout in on your behalf if they're able oh they are able to get in I would you know don't bother with that you're it you you know, if you can get into your opponent's base with a couple of links, you have a good old run around and you see everything that there is to see um, and, and p potentially nibble down a, uh, an SCV over here as well. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, these links keep the Terran honest, essentially. Uh, if you're the Terran player, you know, you can feel it, it can feel a bit claustrophobic if you know that there's links wandering about on the map. You don't feel confident about just sending out a couple of Marines to push away an Overlord, for example, um, because you just know that they'll get surrounded and killed. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that a lot. Um, so, uh, speed, uh, this time not being researched just yet. The Evo Chamber is up and finished and uh, a second Benling Nest coming down. I think that has to be a mistake. Uh, if you've already got a Benling Nest, a second literally does nothing for you. Uh, there's only one upgrade that can come out of it, so it isn't even like you can get a second one so that you can do sort of two upgrades simultaneously. This, I'm pretty sure, is an error uh, from Luos, but uh, not to worry. Uh, Benlings are a good idea playing against Terran. Um, the Carapace is the correct upgrade to get against Terran, um, largely because, as I may have explained before, uh, Terrans do um, sort of small amounts of damage quite rapidly. So armor upgrades against them take one off every bit of that small damage uh, and that can be massively effective. Um, 
Yeah, so several racks here from uh, Waffle Master, which suggests it is going to be a marine heavy composition. Uh, the Tech Lab, again, this, you know, this uh, we saw in the last game as well that the, the upgrades either didn't happen or were very slow in happening. Um, and really, as soon as that Tech Lab finishes up, you want to be researching STEM or Combat Shield. Um, uh, as depending on what sort of play you're, you're going to make, if you're going for a, a standard game, a longer game than Stim, uh, you would crank out first, it takes a long time, um, followed immediately by Combat Shield. Um, if you're planning some sort of rush, uh, because Stim does take so long, um, you might decide that you don't have time to wait for Stim to finish, so you would frequently get Combat Shield and, and time your rush so that just as your marines arrive at the bottom of your opponent's ramp uh, that's exact you know when your marines get to here just as it tells you that the uh, upgrade is complete and combat shield is finished would be ideal so um waffle master again with this uh, hidden expand style um i wonder if this time we are going to see um some extra scouting from the Zerg player. If we're going to see a Ling head over there, uh, you know, plenty of Lings parked here. Why not just grab one and, and just, you know, if you press P and just um, hold Shift, uh, you can just right click a bunch of spots on the map. And the Ling, uh, P is patrol, there it is. And um, the Ling will just patrol uh, between the points that you've clicked on the map. So that Ling can just be bouncing backward and forward. Um, and just give you a heads up if anything happens like a sneaky expand. Um, so mutalisks are what we're going to see from the Zerg and I like mutas. Um, you know, mutas are a fantastic unit. Um, they are great for harassing mineral lines. They can dive in, they're fast, they they do splash damage so they can, they can do huge amounts of damage to a mineral line in a relatively short space of time. There is a sort of critical mass of them that you want to have to be able to do that. Uh, a normal play would involve, you know, churning out a raft of mutas. Maybe maybe spend about a thousand on mutas. Get 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 out something like eight mutas um, uh, and then call it a day because, you know, the Terran can very quickly sort of produce the, the cure for those mutas. Um, uh, and once they have got something like Thor's, uh, you know, the thing about mutas is they, they are useless in a stand-up fight. So if you spend a large amount of money on mutas, um, you can be in trouble if your opponent simply counter-attacks and comes across the map at you because the mutas don't really help in a fight. Um, so you don't want to you don't want to overspend on mutas, but at the same time, you, you want to have enough of them so that when they get into a mineral line, um, they are doing serious amounts of damage. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to see a few more in production. Uh, get up to sort of 8, 9, 10 mutas, and, and then you can fly in here, and you, and you can just smash workers so, so quickly and get out without losing a single muta. Uh, and your opponent is kind of forced then into spending money on things to defend against that. Uh, they've either got to leave portions of their army at home to defend, or they've got to build a Thor and leave a Thor in each mineral line, or they've got to build several turrets in each mineral line in order to defend. Um, so these mutants have an popular building. Mutants don't use mutants to kill buildings. They, they simply don't. Um, I mean, these mutants are going to be here for a very long time before this building is in danger, aren't they? <laughs> Although I say that, awful master not responding to this at all. Uh, maybe they will eventually kill it. Um, but, uh, yeah, as I was saying, it, you know, if the Terran then spends a large amount of money on turrets and things like that, well, well then, you know, they've it, the, your mutas have cost them as much as you spent on them. And in addition, the mutas have done economic damage. So it, it's value from your point of view. Um, so a bunch of links, etc. moving in here, that is a lot of links, and they're going to shut this expand down very, very quickly indeed. So critical difference here already between this and the last game, and that difference is that this was found, uh, and now it doesn't seem like such a great idea because it's such a long way from home. There is no way you can get there in time to save it. Um, I'd like to have seen some of these left behind to kill the uh, remaining stuff, um, you know, because if you kill these, there's a pretty good chance you could supply block your opponent um, and that, well, and in fact, Waffle Master is supply blocked, but, you know, kill those as well, and he's got to actually kill, he's got to create several um, supply depots before he can build a single unit, and that can be really frustrating. Uh, so, you know, I, I'd like to have seen him just polish this off, why not?
well, why leave that there? I don't know. Anyway, um, Luos is is looking in a very strong position at present. Let's have a look at the army supply. You can see Luos well, well ahead in, on that front um, and ahead in terms of upgrades as well with um, the sort of armor and melee attack. Uh, and in addition to that, there is um, plus one attack for air and uh, plus one armor for air. So I don't know if we're going to see more mutas or not being built. We're seeing a lot of benlins in, in production. Um, this this is a good good amount of mutas we've got now. Look, uh, so what are we up to there? Fourteen of these, uh, and that's definitely enough. Uh, but but the way to use these is not in the engagement. The way to use these is you know these should be in the mineral line right now, just just doing damage. And, uh, and as soon as these marines come over to deal with it, you just run away. You just run away and, and you pop up somewhere else and, and you pick something off. But there, look, just get stuck in. Get stuck in, Lewis. Don't, don't dance about taking fire. You, you, I think you've got enough to just break this. All those bend lanes, just go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. Uh, the mutas have flown straight on past. Uh, a lot of those bend lanes are sort of dancing about, but but uh, you know all of this is just going to get cleaned up. Uh, there, there's not only one thing that actually shoots air, uh, and it's a single... Um, Viking, more mutas coming in. This is just way, way too much, sorry, to deal with, um, and that's going to be GG because because there, there is just nothing that can test this, uh, that can uh, contest this. Sorry, um, you know that that many mutas uh, with the splash damage and stuff that they do is it, going to be very hard to deal with for any sort of small numbers of units that come out. Um, Thors are exceptionally good against mutas. Stim Marines are very good against mutas, but you need a critical mass of them. It, it's very much a number thing. If you don't have that critical mass, the mutas will win. Um, not sure about fighting within range of this uh, bunker. E either focus down the bunker or uh, or move away from it. Uh, but that is the GG, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, what a turn up for the books that is. So, um, you know, Waffle Master uh, it worked out very well for him in the first game, having that ninja expand. In this game, caught out and Luos shuts it down hard. GG.